Hey buddy, welcome back to Netcode Hub Channel. I am Frederick and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to look at how to connect Signal R between Web API and Blazor WebAssembly. You know, Signal R it is real time communication library in ASP.NET Core. It allows server code to push content to connected client instantly. As soon as the server gets it, it pushes it to all the connected clients. In Blazor applications, you might use Signal R to create interactive features such as live chat, real time data updates, such as stock tickets, sports calls, or social media feeds. So, in all, Signal R actually implements some features that can enable you to update a client instantly as soon as the server receives data. ASP.NET Core team has made it very simple and, and easier to integrate Signal R in your application. So let's see how to go about this in this video. What I have already done here is I have created a solution added to project. These projects are .NET Web API and also Blazor WebAssembly. That is the only thing that I have done. And I believe you can do that, isn't it? Great to do that. Now, in .NET API, Signal R is already part of it. So you don't need to install that. But when it comes to the client, that's the WebAssembly, that is where we need to install a Signal R package. So take note, we're going to install only one package for now, and that's going to be the package for um, the Blazor WebAssembly. Okay, so if I go to my solution, that is what I have. I have a solution here with two projects, API and our WebAssembly. That is a default one. As soon as you create, this is what you get. So for our Signal R integration, this is what we're going to do. We are going to allow the system or the Signal R hub to broadcast message as a notification to your client connected as soon as a new user connects to the hub. And when the person, also when the connected user disconnects or stops the connection, we want to also notify the rest of the client. So when you get connected, we want to notify client that maybe this ID has connected. When it disconnect, we want to also notify the rest of the client that you are gone. You see? Yeah, so let's handle that. So the very first thing that we need to do here is to create our hub. Aside from that, we need to register our Signal R service and also create our Signal R URL. That's an address. We can do that in the program.cs file. So make sure you have a web API creature. That's I've done mine. You go to your program.cs file. And now here, we're going to add better the services. So in here, we can add Signal R. It is already. Aside from this, we need to map the, the endpoint as a route to the signal R, and that's going to be the app.map. And here we can use hub. So this map hub, we need to create a class that's going to be the hub. Okay. So let's say this is connection hub or signal R. This is signal R connection hub. And after that, what we're going to do here is you need to specify the route. So here we're going to say connect. Now let's create a class for this. So I'm going to create a folder in here and I'll name it as Signal R Hubs. And in that, let's create a class. Name it as Signal R, the one that we specified here. We have to make sure we have the same thing. So do the same. And now we have something like this. I believe we have same, isn't it? Great. So this, this has to inherit from a hub. So this hub. And now this is coming from this namespace. Good. So in here, we want to specify two methods. These are, the, we are overriding the default method. That is when ESA get connected. And now when that get disconnected. So these are the methods that you want to do. And in that, we are specifying some parameters in it. The first one here, it is when the user get connected to this hub. 
So if there is a get connected, that is the first method that's going to get called. Now in that, you see we are getting all clients who have connected to the hub. And I really want to send a message to them that this current user has joined. And now maybe you can put it, say hi to it. So maybe you can remove this. We don't need to have a new line. So let's say hi to him. Let's assume it's a male, right? <laughs> say hi to him or her. You can do that. Good. So now that we have this, when the user get connected, this is a method that's going to get called. We're going to send a message to all the clients connected. We pass in the current contest ID and that is a current user ID. Good. Now here, where do we get this? Contest of connection ID is going to, going to be generated as soon as you get connected to the hub. It is inbuilt and you get that ID anytime you, a client connect to the hub. Okay, so that's what we are extracting it from. The same thing applies to undisconnected async. So when the user disconnects from the hub, this method will get called. And in that, you also want to notify all clients. We pass the same contest ID. You see? And now here we are adding just left. You can handle this here or you can handle this in the client. This, you handle this in the server. And now we can handle this in the client. I prefer having it in the server. Okay? But if you think you prefer it in the client, then you can pass in the client ID. And now when this method gets erased, you can just add this um, string to that. But well, let's maintain this for now. Now that we have this hub created with two methods specified here neatly, what we need to do here is to save this. We have a connection created and unregistered in the program. So we are done. We are done with our hub connection creation. Now let's go to the client and let's start to consume this and also um, subscribe to this method so that as soon as this gets raised, we can have that method being called. All right, so in the web assembly, let's also create a folder in here and I'll name this, let's say this also signal R connections. So maybe we can actually add a class, a C sharp class library, and we can add this service to that. So anytime that you want to connect to another uh, WebAssembly, you just have to consume that um, um, library in that project, and that is all. So instead of putting it here, we want to make it expandable so we can be using it in another project. But for now, <laughs> let's maintain this. And I mean that let's create a class, and on this class, we're going to name this as Signal R Connection. So this Signal R Connection here is going to get called you to get the connection when you subscribe to this anytime that um, a client gets connected and now in that what are the things that we're going to be doing here we want to have a state so first of all let's have a connection state change now this is going to be an action now the reason why i am doing this is you know i'm going to have state now this state is going to be like connected connection um, disconnected and etc so all the state we can handle that and now we want to give a live feed on the state that the user is currently in. So if the user is connected, we want to display the net connected. If it is connected, you want to display disconnected. Okay. So in that, this can be changed anytime. So when this gets changed, we want to notify the current um, component. Okay. To get rendered. And that is, that is the reason why I am having this action to get it rendered. And in that, you need to build a connection. So in order to build that connection, let's see, this is what we're going to do. We can specify our connection as read only, and now we give it a name. So you can see that before that we can have this error gone, we have to install the package. So nope, don't worry, let's go and install this package. So on the WebAssembly, we're going to right click on dependencies. Maybe let's try to manage by adding a new package. The name of this package is a Microsoft.asnet called a signal client. So make sure you have this package installed beautifully in your project. Great, now it is installed. So when you go to the connection, you can just click on this and use the reference in here. Aside from that, once you have this connection, what we're going to do here is we're going to specify with the URL. So with that URL, since we are connecting to the um, API, we need to specify the absolute URI in here, and that's the local host. And now from here, we have this connect. Now, what is the port of your web API? If you don't know, go to your API properties folder, and now click on line setting.json, and now you're going to specify the HTTPS down here, 7095. So grab that. Now replace it with this, and that is all. Aside from that, what you need to do here is to add 
dot build so you see integrating this or implementing this is very simple isn't it now the next thing I need to do here is since we are having nav navigation manager we need to inject it by using constructor that's your primary constructor so if not you have to create a constructor here and specify this um, um nav manager in there but here we're using the primary constructor which are introduced in c sharp version 12 so we have it in here okay Aside from that, uh, we want to specify our start. So if I click on start connection, um, this is what I want to do. I am not starting a connection here. I want to start it separately so that I can click on this to start and then to stop this connection as well. Good. So in here, I have my start. And now we are checking if connection state is not equal to connected. That's why we want to start this. Else, skip this. And I go to this method, get connection state. Okay. Now, if I click on close connection to, I want to terminate this connection. So this means that the user wants to um, leave out from the, 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 the chat or uh, etc. So in that, we want to also um, check if the state is connected. That is where we want to stop the connection. Aside from that, here we can use um, switch statement to check the state of the connection. Is it connected? Is it reconnecting? Is it uh, um, connecting? Is it disconnected? So in here, within each, we are specifying. So we could see we have a switch of what um, hard connection does state. And now we're going to invoke this method as a method that I created. And I'm going to, we're going to specify this uh, message in so we can have it set up to um, this connection state. You know, it initially set to empty. So you want to initialize, after initializing, we want to set the variable or the value to that variable in here. And now the last one I need to do here is that uh, we're going to define this invoke method. And that is where we need to pass or in case any of this um, becomes true, we want to just call this method and pass in the message in here to this. Invoke it and now boom, that is all. So once we have this, what we're going to do here is we're going to save this. Now let's go to our solution. So our program for web assembly. And what we're going to do here is we need to register this. So make sure you grab that. And now we go to our register so signal our connection that's a class that you created so make sure you do that all right so now that we have with this what we're going to do here is we go to our pages and our home let's go in there and subscribe this so first of all what we're going to do here is we have to inject so let's inject this in our class that you created we need to inject it on top like this so we have a signal hack connection and now this is coming from the namespace of WebAssembly dot um signal connection okay and also once you have this we can also implement disposable because we're going to dispose this we're going to um, subscribe to a method and now when we get undisposed no when the page is posing we have to um, unsubscribe to that so let's have this at code section and now in the code section since we have this we can unsubscribe from that and now that is when the page is disposing and now when the page or uh, when you click on start and stop what do you want to do this these are the things that you want to perform we have this post that's why we are unsubscribing from this state has changed and now when if i click on stop button i want to close the connection if i click on start i want to start the connection so maybe i can just have a name as connect and disconnect right so this sounds good okay so now that we have this what we're going to do here is when the page starts we're going to um, initialize the page and I'm going to create a list of message in here as a string and I mean that when the page initializes we want to subscribe to this um, event specified in the class or in the service and also we need to um, join or um, subscribe to the method which we get called and that's an all client notification you pass in a statement because this is a statement we can extract the connection ID from it so it's a statement you can pass you can give it any name at all after all, it's a string, so you can pass any name. And now this, the data type of this must correspond to what we're going to specify in here. So this string, and now here, yeah, you have string. Then the list that message that we created, we're going to add the current statement that has come in from the server to it. Then we notify the page. We're going to re-render the page. So whatever thing that we have in here is going to be looked on, and I'll get it displayed. After that, you have this start. Now what is this start going to do? This start here is going to start this connection. So here we made it as connect. So I'm going to copy this as connect and I replace it here as connect. Okay. So after we join or we subscribe to this event, then start a connection. Good. 
So now that we have this, the next thing we're going to do here is we need to have a simple UI so we can display um, something in here. So let's see what I am doing. <laughs> Maybe you can customize it to suit what you want. But this is what I want. Well, and this is a very simple one for you to get the understanding. So we have connect here. And this is connect. And we have disconnect. So let me grab this. Disconnect. Disconnect instead of what? Stop. Okay. Now this is um, nav link. Okay, so this nav link is just a link. Or I can have it as a button. So maybe, let me see. Button, BTN. This is success. BTN. Small. Then here, we're going to have this is disconnect. So BTN. BTN. Danger. BTN. Small as well. Okay. Now we have our test danger, so we can remove our test from here since we have this specified. It's inclusive, so we can remove that. Good. Now this is very simple. You see, we are looping through our message in here and are displaying the message in that. Very simple. Now here is a footer, and we are displaying the state of the signal out or the hub from that specific or single individual who has just connected as a client. All right. So now that we have this, what we're going to do here is we're going to run this. But before we do that, let's start. Let's configure um startup project so from the multiple startups i want to start both at, a, at the same time api first then i have my assembly also launched once you have the two configured as multiple startup project let's run both so you can see that we have our project uh, the app is ready we have API is ready. Now we have nothing in the API, so we are not much concerned with the API. All that we want to do here is we want to make sure that the API is running so that our hub will be active. Yes, and as far as it is running, we can now hide this and continue on with the client because that's where the focus on. Now let's see, um, here we are connected together. So if I click, we are connected already, isn't it? I said together. Oh, <laughs> it's already. So connected. Now if I click on this, can I see what's going to happen? So if I click on this, you see we are not disconnected. So let's see, I'm going to create a new tab in here and now we're going to connect, okay, to this. Now this is uh, the, the URL, so let's grab this. Now let's see, once we are launching the app so we can get ourselves connected. So here, a new client is getting connected and now this is connected. But you see, there's no message for this guy because here it is disconnected. Now let's connect again. As soon as we connect, you see we have the message and this message is what? This person has joined. Now, we did the contest uh, the connection ID from the hub. Okay. Now, let's see if I open another hub and I'll join a different user. Let's see what's going to happen. So, I grab this one and I can open a new tab in here based on this. Now, let's see. So, a new person will be connected to this. And I can see we have notified. When you check the new one, we have the same to notify. If I click on this, can I see what happened? Now, say disconnect. And I'll see. So, this person just left, isn't it? Now check out this one, disconnect. This person also left. And now check it from here. You see, we have here this person also what? Left. So if I connect again, if I connect, you see I have it in here. And I want to come here because I have it. And now this time, if I connect to, I have this also connected. And now the message also gets um, reflected here. And I have connected. Disconnect and I have disconnected. Disconnect, I have disconnected. And also disconnect, I have what? Disconnected. Yeah, so that's a simple way to connect um, clients and also um, creating service to um, for each client to have access to. Okay, making it very simple and now uh, easy way to implement it as well. Yeah, I've already made a video on that. Okay, there's a whole video on chat. So maybe um, if you want us to continue this in the same way, yep, maybe you can just let me know in the comment section. Yeah. Alright, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you've learned something in here. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed, then don't forget to do that. And also click on that bell to receive updates as soon as I do upload new content. Like this video if you found this informative and yeah, educative as well. <laughs> okay. Alright, so I'm gonna catch up again. So then take care.